Statistics is a specialized branch of mathematics that focuses on data. Um, in particular, we're looking at a, the whole spectrum uh, of how we work with and deal with data, uh, where statistics deals with how we collect the data, how we analyze it, how we interpret the results, and then how we present that information to whoever is interested in it. So we are going to talk about and study in this, uh, in this last unit a little bit about the statistical process um, and ways that we can collect and analyze that data. So in order to do that, let's kind of think of an example here. Uh, let's suppose that I am interested in knowing what the average height of a person living in the US is. Let's just write it this way. Okay, so if this is the group that I'm interested in, this is going to be a hard number for us to physically calculate, right? We would need to talk to every single person living in the U.S. and figure out what their average height is. The logistics of that are pretty crazy. Um, the U.S. only does a census once every uh, a census at once every ten years, where they try to contact every person that lives in the U.S. Um, it's a big, big deal. That's very expensive. So if I'm interested in this type of an information, chances are I don't want to talk to everyone that's living in the US. The chances are I'd like to look at a smaller grouping of people, see what their average height is, and then use that to make a conclusion about the height of an average person in, living in the US. With this in mind, let's talk a little bit about some vocabulary. If I'm interested in finding the average height of someone, that average height, the actual average height, is something that we call a parameter. Now this is the actual average height where every single person is contacted. And pretty much unless we're in a situation where we can talk to every single person, we're not going to be able to find this parameter. Um, it's the actual, which is the actual average height of the entire population. All right, so that brings up this other pop, uh, term here, which is population. Population, when we're dealing with statistics, is the group that we are interested in. And this is on a big scale right? This is, this is going to be your bigger value. This is everyone that would be involved in whatever scientific study that you're interested in learning about. So in this case, um, my population would be every person living in the U.S. So nicely enough, parameter and population both start with P. It's an easy way to remember it. Um, but what we're looking for, if we're looking for parameters, we're looking for some key piece of information that's gathered from everybody in an entire population of who we're interested in. Now, because most of the time this isn't very practical, we like to conduct something that we call a sample. Instead of talking to every single person in the population, for a sample, we're going to pick a small subgroup or smaller, right, relatively speaking, subgroup of the population. And I'm going to use that to make a prediction. Once I get the sample, I'm going to be able to calculate what I call a statistic. And a statistic is just a calculation based on the results. of analyzing a sample. So statistics come from samples, parameters come from populations.
So as we want to go and look at this, now let's talk a little bit about the gathering of that particular sample. So in this case, if I wanna find the average height of a person living in the US, I'm going to need to pick, so here's all the people in the US that live in the US, live in the US, and I'm gonna to need to talk to some smaller subgroup of that. And that's gonna be my sample. Okay, so this group that I talked to is my sample. Now, how do I pick what that group is? Well, we want to pick, what would you say if I said, let's go to a childcare center and talk to every person there? If I'm looking for the average height of someone in the, living in the US and I go to a child care center, what are the chances that I'm going to be getting what we call a representative sample of my big population? By just talking to people in a child care center, I'm gonna get a couple of teachers and instructors, and then I'm gonna get a lot of kids. Um, and kids tend to be shorter than the average height of a person living in the US. So by by taking a sample here, this is something that we would call not representative of my group. Because the group that I chose tends to be, kids tend to be shorter. So we wanna make sure that we try to get a group that's as representative as possible of the overall group. The best way to do this is to try to be as random as possible in our data cal calculations. And we'll talk about this um, in more detail in future videos. But we really want to make sure as we're looking for this sample, this group that we're going to be talking to about a statistic, that we can figure out what's going to be happening. Uh, so going to a child care center isn't necessarily going to be a good move. Only interviewing females isn't necessarily going to be a um, representative sample either because females tend overall to be shorter than the male population overall. Um, so we want a mix of males and females in there. We could, we'd could we need a mix maybe of some children and a lot of adults based on the, the population of what's going on. And this should remind you a little bit about, you know, thinking about the, the discussions that we've had regarding Congress and the makeup of uh, of Congress where it's not necessarily representative of what's happening um, in the country itself, right? The, the demographics are, aren't the same and in the same numbers, and that leads to groups that are being left out or not heard, and thus changing that sample to be different than um, what it actually, what the parameter actually is. So we want our statistic or our calculation from our smaller group to be as good as possible in order to estimate the parameter of the population. Um, so kind of thinking about what about my sample group would maybe make it special, right? Females tend to be shorter, kids tend to be shorter. Maybe if we're interviewing everyone in a professional basketball locker room, that's gonna maybe be taller than average, right? So we wanna come up with some way that we can um, really get a randomized group of, uh, that's representative of what's going on. And that's a huge branch of statistics. We'll talk about um, some of the implications there, but this idea of a uh, representative sample is really key. All right, so with that in mind, let's suppose that uh, we have, um, we're living in a voting district and we want to know who's gonna be who's favored to win the election. Let's say there's three candidates, candidate A, candidate B, and candidate C. And I need to, I want to conduct a study here. Now, what are my different pieces of information? My parameter is going to be the winning, the winner of the vote, right? That's what I want to be able to figure out. The population is going to be anyone in that voting district who can vote. Uh, 
I'm not going to get a good idea of the winner if I talk to non-voters or high school kids that can't vote yet or things like that. Uh, so if I really want, I need to make sure I'm picking people. I have identified the population of who I care about. And in this, care, this case, I care about anyone in the district who has voting power or who intends to vote in the election. So that's going to be our parameter in our population. Obviously, we probably can't talk to every single person in the voting district. It's uh, expensive and probably impossible to get a hold of everyone. So instead, what we want to do is we want to conduct a sample. So the sample is the group of people that we talk to. And let's suppose that I want to talk to 150 um, random voters. And then I'm going to uh, be able to, and when I talk to those voters, I have um, 100 people that vote for candidate A, 30 people that vote for B, and 20 that say that they're going to be voting for C. This is the data that I collect. Okay. If I want to use or find a statistic, my statistic is going to be based on the collected data. So if I want to do a statistic like in this case, I can say that I expect 100 out of, or that I talk to 100 out of 150 people. And this is going to give me 66.7% when I do that division. This 66.7% of voters for candidate A is considered my statistic. It's a calculation based on the data gathered in the sample. So this, this is what the statistic is. And I'm using the statistic based on my sample. Now, I can use the statistic to make an inference about the overall population. Let's say, and as a best estimate, for the parameter. If 66.7 voters, percent of voters are voting for A, it's likely that A is going to be winning um, with 66.7% of voters based on my sample. Um, so I can make my best possible estimate based on my statistic So if I know that there are 5,000 voters in the town, Based on my sample, I would expect 66.7% of those 5,000 voters to vote for A. And I could figure out what that number is, you know, do 0.667, changing that percent to a decimal, timesing it by the 5,000 citizens. And this is going to be my best guess about um, about that parameter, which is going to be the number of people that are that are voting for that can particular candidate. Um, so in this case, if I do 0.667 times 5,000, end up with 3,335, and this is going to be an estimate. of the parameter in terms of the number of people that are voting for A. And I make that estimate based on this statistic. We'll talk about how good or not uh, these estimates are gonna be in some of the future videos here. Um, our estimate is only as good as the data that we collect, right? Um, all right.